In this video, Planet Doug goes culture vulture as I take you to another highlight of Kuala Lumpur and one of my personal favorites, the National Art Gallery or Balai Seni Nagara. Why do I like it so much? Well, it's easy to reach by MRT. The interior architecture of the building is bright, spacious, modern, and fun. The exhibits are always new and engaging, and it's open to everyone free of charge. The day was a bit of a whirlwind of motion. It started with the LRT and MRT tunnels, which led to a labyrinth of escalators, and it ended with a four-story corkscrew ramp. I felt dizzy, but much more cultured afterwards. So sit back, relax, let me do all the work and enjoy a day as a culture vulture in Malaysia. Welcome back to Planet Doug. I'm still here in the bustling capital city of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. And the first challenge of every day for me is always to get across this road. <laughs> I have to figure out a better way of doing it because the traffic really sneaks up on you here. Oh, you gotta run. Comes around the corner there pretty fast. Sort of a blind corner. And then here as well. I think we're a little bit outside of rush hour. What time is it? Oh yeah, it's way past rush hour. I've lost all track of time. It's 20 after 10 in the morning. And I'm heading out to meet up with uh, Jamie, a friend of mine here in KL, a world traveler. And uh, Jamie suggested that we visit the National Art Gallery here in KL. And I've been to the National Art Gallery a few times, actually. I think I, I even shot a video, maybe two videos there in the past. I can't quite remember. But uh, he was interested in checking the place out. And of course, the good thing about an art gallery is Every time you visit, it's a new experience. New exhibitions, new things on display, new art. So that's where I'm headed. And uh, Jamie is getting there on his own. We're gonna meet at the art gallery itself. He's probably walking the entire way, madman that he is. And I was even thinking about walking myself because I was looking at Google Maps and it would take like an hour to walk there. And, but I am going to go by uh, LRT, MRT. But it's going to take almost an hour to go by LRT and MRT as well. So you don't actually save much time by taking a public transit. But of course, you save a lot of uh, energy on your legs. And I want to uh, save the walking energy for the museum rather than being exhausted and hot and sweaty when I get there. So I checked out the National Art Gallery uh, website and I don't think there's a big dramatic exhibit on right now. I'm not sure what's going on, but I know there's one exhibit called Nusa, which is a exhibition of their, from their permanent collection. And Nusa means homeland or motherland and apparently this exhibition they pulled from their permanent collection is all about how people view their homeland within Southeast Asia. So perhaps not necessarily just Malaysia, but all the countries of Southeast Asia. So I think that's the main exhibit that I'll be seeing. And there might be some other exhibits. I couldn't quite figure out from the website what's going on. I always like exhibits that have big sculptures and modern art, things like that, crazy looking things, just to make it more fun. But I think today's uh, trip there is going to be more about painting and things like that. We'll find out when we get there. So first we have to get there. 
So starting point, Masjid Jamek Station. I've been leaving here frequently to head towards uh, Pudu, but this time I'm taking a different line, the Kalana Jaya line, and then I'm going to Ampang Park, transferring at Ampang Park to the Putra Jaya line, a new MRT line, and uh, that will take me to a station near the art gallery. And I believe the other times that I've done this, that MRT station wasn't open. I had to go to like Titiwangsa and walk from Titiwangsa, but I think I can get very close today by MRT. So, ah, public transport adventure first. Power of the touch and go. And if I let my legs take me, I'd end up heading over in that direction because that's where I often go. But not this time. I have to head to this line here, the uh, Kalana Jaya line. And there's something about, there's something going on, but I don't know what that means. But I know from experience that this is where I need to go. I've got to go down, 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 several layers. I'm not sure if I'm going to make much sense this morning. I could tell as I was leaving from my hotel that I'm not really rested. I've been trying to get rest since I arrived back in KL, but I've been pretty busy and staying up late. And this morning I woke up pretty early and I thought I was good to go. I woke up and, oh wow, I got some good sleep and I felt fresh. So I got out of bed and showered and shaved and made a cup of coffee, did all my usual things. But as soon as I powered up my laptop, I could tell I was still exhausted. I should have stayed in bed, tried to go back to sleep for another hour or two. And uh, there's a, so far there's been a lot of uh, proof that I needed more sleep. I'm doing weird physical things. <laughs> like I got in the elevator, I'm on the second floor, and I knew I had to press G to go down to the ground floor, but somehow I got on the elevator. I'm on floor number two, and I just sit there pressing the number two button over and over. Like, why isn't the elevator moving? And I keep pressing the wrong button. I was like, ah, oh, I'm pressing the button for the floor I was already on. So little things like that, just physical mistakes. It's like, okay, you're, you're tired. And uh, I should have uh, slept more. Here's my favorite thing in the uh, transit system of Kuala Lumpur. There's a big sign here. I love these because even exhausted as I am, I can still figure out I need to be on this side because I'm going from Masjid Jamek to Ampang Park. So just at a glance, I can figure things out. You don't even have to think very much. My train is already here. I love these new digital signs. They're very clear. It's a lot more information than there used to be. So it tells you that you're on the uh, Kalana Jaya line right there. It never used to tell you that. And KJ stands for Kalana Jaya. So you have to make that connection because the lines are always listed as initials. So this is Kalana Jaya stop number 13. And then it switches over to this full scale view of the entire line, which is really nice. And here you can see it tells you Dangwangi KJ12. So Kalana Jaya stop number 12. So there you see 12, 11, 10, 9, 13, 14. So there's a lot of information packed into this uh, digital display. Now they even show it to you like that. So they show it to you in many different ways. I really like that. And of course, these trains are always good for the uh, nine-year-old boy that lives inside of all of us guys. Can't resist uh, taking at least a little bit of video out of the front window of the train. Going through the tunnel. I think these uh, subway tunnels are quite interesting. 
in pop culture. We see them all the time. Every action movie, there's always a scene that takes place down in the tunnels. So we see them all the time. And yet in uh, real life, of course, we never ever go into one of these tunnels. And yet in movies, it seems like every second day, people are running up and down these tunnels, trying to escape from the tunnels. So it's a very familiar world in movies, but in real life, of course, you never have a, a reason to come down here and locked doors like that over there. Well, they, uh, yeah, they won't let you down here. So we just arrived at uh, Ampang Park, KJ9. And this is where I have to transfer to the uh, Putrajaya line. And the door's open on the other side. I think I've done this transit, this um, transit before, one line to the other, but I don't remember it, so I don't remember exactly how it works. But I guess uh, you just follow the signs and see where you end up. Pretty big transfer station. But I'm not entirely sure if there's a direct connection between this line and the uh, Putrajaya line. It looks like I might have to exit. As I saw that on Google Maps, it looked like it was directing me to exit this station and then walk to the next one. But so maybe I've never done this transit before because, yeah, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, I think, yeah, I think I just have to exit from here. Yeah, I'll point something out as I do so that I find really confusing for the local transit system. Power of touch and go. We're out. So, okay. They're anticipating people's confusion here to uh, MRT Putrajaya line. So that way <laughs> they've got four arrows just in case you're uh, missing the point. And then over here, there's another arrow. And then th this is what I find so confusing about the system here, where now it says this way to MRT Ampang Park. And I get confused because like, I'm already at Ampang Park station. So what's going on here? But this line here, as you can see, is Ampam Park LRT. So this is a light rapid transit line, the type of train there. And this is the newer, bigger system. This is an MRT line. And for me, logically, as a human being, it makes no difference. I don't care whether it's LRT, MRT. All I care about is that it's transit. But here in Kuala Lumpur, everybody knows exactly which line is LRT, which is MRT, and they talk about it all the time. But in my head, I've all, my whole life, I've always used MRT to refer to the entire transit system. I'm going to go to the, I'll tell someone here, I'm going to go to the National Art Gallery by MRT, and they'll correct me and say, no, 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 you have to take the LRT first, and then you can take the MRT. But to me, I'm just saying, I'm going to get there by subway, by public transit, you know. So yeah, I find it gets very, very confusing because they really hold on to this LRT, MRT distinction. And the other problem with it is they name the lines based on one station. So this line I'm going to is called the Putrajaya line, but that's where the line ends on one side and it ends at Kwasa Damansara at the other end. So even though I'm getting on the MRT line going to Kwasa Damansara, the signs tell me I'm going to Putrajaya. So I find it's not logical to name the line after one of the stations because it just gets very, very confusing. Anyway, we've emerged back into the real world. I always find this funny too about the world at people who do signs because they gave me 15,000 signs to direct me 
to leave the station, but now that I walk out of the station and I'm out here in the world, there isn't one sign telling me where to go to get to this Ampang Park MRT station. So it's funny how signs get you started and they're always at the very end, they don't have another arrow to just finish you off. But I, ah, oh, okay, <laughs> I can see it. Right over there, so there's Ampang Park MRT. So that's the entrance to the MRT and this is the entrance to the Ampang Park LRT. I, confused? <laughs> I used to be confused, but I'm now the, the master. But yeah, I've never done this before. I thought I had. I didn't realize I had to exit the station and then go back in again. I guess when they built the MRT line, the Putrajaya line, just because of whatever, whatever's here underground, they weren't able to link them with a tunnel system. Interesting little park here. Check that out. Park and then all kinds of Dunkin' Donuts over there. None of these are open again because it's Ramadan. A lot of places tend to be closed now during the day because of Ramadan, but yeah, little park. Looks like a new park. The trees aren't fully grown yet, but when they're grown, I guess you'll get a lot of nice shade in there. Coffee shop is open. Huh. You can really tell that this is a newer system. MRT, bigger, badder, more modern. Everything is just on a bigger scale everywhere you look. It just seems that way. It's the uh, Kalana, Jaya, Kalana Jaya LRT line. It'd be one of the older lines here, and this would be one of their uh, newest lines. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, I'm running a little bit late now. Unusual for me, but uh, meeting Jamie at 11, but it's already a 20 to 11. I'm not, I've got just a few stops to go on this line. And then there's a bit of a walk from the next station to the National Art Gallery. Yeah, with these modern MRT lines too, they tend to, because they're newer, they have to go deeper and deeper underground to get underneath all the foundations and all the pipes of the city. So you, you tend to go down much, 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 much more. But yeah, look at the scale of this place. Very different from the LRT system. So you sort of feel when you're in the LRT system and then when you're in the MRT system. But again, to me, they're all the same thing. So I don't make a distinction between them. So here's Ampang Park. And uh, so it goes to Kwasa Damansara on one end and uh, Putrajaya at the other and the next train for me is three minutes from now. Platform number two. Yeah, I love that. A lot of good information there. So I better, I wanna catch this train. We got a long ways to go yet to head down. And here, I guess you just press it there. No? How do we go in? So it did work here. All right, platform one and two. Sometimes there's a different escalator depending on what platform you want to go to, but here it's the same one, so it makes no difference. Look at that. <laughs> You'd think we'd be at the platform, but we still, still have to go down. Another one. In amazing. These modern uh, subway systems are incredible. Look at the scale of this. It's crazy. Heading down from this floor. Looks almost like a maze. Something they'd build for a movie set. I think I better uh, start walking just in case. I nearly missed my train when I was heading from Port Dixon to here by about a minute. So uh, I cut it too closely that day. 
I don't want to do it again. So, platform two. Oh yeah, good thing I started moving. Here it is. Yeah, check this out. Much wider, as you can see, compared to the uh, LRT system. This is MRT. Bigger trains, wider from side to side. Everything is newer. And I need, I need to go to the uh, hospital. Where is it? Hospital Kuala Lumpur. Oh, it's only two stops away. Right there. Raja Uda, then uh, Hospital Kuala Lumpur. So I, I guess I won't be as late as I thought. But yeah, look how nice that map is. It's a beautiful map. Really easy to read. And of course, the, uh, the nine-year-old boy in me wants to look out the front window just for a minute or two. To see what this train looks like compared to the LRT. A lot bigger window at the front. Yeah, much bigger tunnel too, right? Much larger in scale. And yeah, the scale of these things always blows my mind. The construction, the cost of them, the planning and engineering, it's quite something. It's a modern, for me, it's a modern uh, wonder of the world, these uh, MRT systems, these big subway systems. And the scale of the platforms too, look at that, it's huge. You could, you could have a soccer game down here, or a basketball game, they're that wide. are all of the different lines LRT Ampang LRT Sri Petaling LRT Kalanajaya so that's where we started on the Kalanajaya line then the monorail of course and then MRT Kajang funny thing is on these maps they don't list the line that you're on because we're on the Putrajaya line but the Putrajaya line is not on the list, right? That's the Putrajaya line, so I guess logically they thought these are the other lines and they don't have to uh, put it on the list. So here we are, we're arriving at Hospital Kuala Lumpur. And it does tell you the direction you're going, the end station, Kwasa Damansara. So that's really good information to have too. Planet Doug approved. The National Art Gallery, by the way, has a little bit of a history. It was established back in the 50s. I think there was a long period of a number of years in the 50s, like from 54 to 59, something like that, where they were talking about opening, establishing a National Art Gallery, getting the funding together, designing it, all that sort of thing. And then they built it, and it opened in the 50s, I think. But that was at a completely different location. And then over time, this one opened. I think this location opened in 1998. Don't quote me on that, but that's the number that's uh, in my head right now. I think uh, they constructed this new location and uh, it was officially opened in 1998. Man, check this out. 
feels a little bit, I mean, it's impressive, the size and the scale. Let's get here in the, in the middle and get a nice uh, symmetrical view of that. Escalators on both sides. And it looks like they were planning for the future. This station clearly can handle a lot of people. And now we have to get back to the surface. Climb up from the depths. Wow. Look at that. Now, again, I'm in uncharted waters. Exactly how I get out of here and, and walk to the gallery, I'm not sure. Man, look at the scale. I'm going on and on about it. But check that out, looking down there. I don't know if it comes across on the GoPro, but that's an impressive sight. Four escalators side by side. So that is the exit to, that's exit A, Jalan Utama Hospital. No power in the verse can stop me exiting. No power in the verse can stop me. There we go, look at that. Beautiful. So I think this is a Google Maps checking time. Figure out where to go. Oh, there's a neighborhood map over there. Love it, love it. This should give me an idea of where to go. Oh, look at that. They're even anticipating where you might want to go. Huh, isn't that weird? I just assumed the, oh, it is, I was gonna say. They just have it in uh, Malay, Balai Seni Nagara. I believe Nagara means like national or country. Seni means art. And Balai is a gallery or hall. So this is the National Art Gallery. And we'll be walking by the Istana Budaya. And that's the, like a national performing arts center, I believe. Jalan Kwantan, it looks similar, doesn't it? But I, I've been to those places before and Titiwangsa, the lake and the park is nearby here. But apparently if I want to go to that, any of those places, exit B is what I want. And let me take this in for a minute. I found it. You just have to train yourself to look for the Malay instead of the English. I was looking for National Art Gallery, but it has Balai Seni Negara. So that's where I want to go, exit B. And uh, I'm not sure about the roads. I don't think you, you can't walk along this one. That's a major system. So I think I have to go through this small road to get there taking me past the Istana Budaya. So let's go to B, and then we have to sort of maybe left and right. All right, seems simple enough. Of course, we are living on planet Doug at the moment. Anything could happen. I may be in the wrong uh, place entirely. As I said, I woke up really tired. Well, I woke up feeling good, but I can tell I'm tired. Whoa. Yeah, when you go through one of these stations, you shouldn't underestimate how far you need to travel to get from, say, the train back to the real world. Long, wide hallways, so many levels and layers. It always takes me by surprise. You start thinking you need uh, inline skates or a scooter, skateboard. And they have a beautiful map. I, I really admire the map that they've put together for this system. Once, once you know what you're looking at, this is very, very cool. So this yellow line, by the way, that's the one we're on right now. There's Putrajaya. It's a huge line. It goes all the way to Putrajaya, which is far away, way outside of KL. And then it comes all the way into the city, all the way up here, and finally ends in Kwasa Damansar. And that is a major journey, trust me. Yeah, I love MRT systems. So they do up here, I mean, they do have a sign on it that calls the whole thing MRT. And that's the way I think of it. But whenever you're talking to local people, you really have to distinguish between an LRT line and an MRT, because in their minds, they really think of them as two different things. So, up we go.
Hop, 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 hop. Back in the real world, and there's one of, this is the uh, Performing Arts Center, National something or other Performing Arts Center right there. It's an older building, I remember. Astana Buddha, Budaya, Budaya, Astana Budaya. And uh, I went in there to look around before. Maybe I even, I think I shot video in there, took some pictures, an older building. You can see it's a little bit worn. So I'm a little bit confused. I checked uh, Google Maps and I couldn't quite figure out the route, but I think I can just meander in this direction and I'll stumble across where I want to be. Hello. I thought my way was blocked by this Istana Bud Budaya but I think I can go this way and this should take me to the, I think that's it right there, the art gallery. Yeah, not surprisingly, jackhammers and it looks like they're re renovating the building, repairing it. Hello. Which isn't a big surprise. This is Kuala Lumpur. Everything is always, uh, something is always being built. So there's the, the back side of the performing center. Pretty impressive, but it does look like it needs a coat of paint, a little bit of power washing, get it back into shape. And I'm fairly sure this is the National Art Gallery over here. If it's not, I don't know what else it could be. I'm a few minutes late. I got turned around. I walked into a dead end. I have to uh, backtrack here. And I kind of got turned around because I saw a big group of security guards ahead of me and it made it look like I couldn't go in this direction. So I, I went another way, but Google Maps wants me to walk this way. Based on the size of that building, that's probably the art gallery there, but I don't know if I can make it. We've got a gate here. I have no idea what I've done. I don't know how to get anywhere. Yeah, I think part, I think the problem is all this construction, because you can't really get out that direction. Maybe I can walk around it. See if this uh, leads to a dead end or not. Can I go around this way? No. <laughs> ah, I don't know how to get there. I'm completely stuck. I got to go. I have no idea how to do this. I have to. I think I have to go all the way back to the MRT station and start all over. You just can't go this way. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I can go in there and, and exit again. What do you think? Who knows? Maybe there's another uh, gate up there will be a shortcut instead of going all the way back to the MRT station but I doubt it is there an opening here is there a, a, a gate on the left because that's where I need to go right here on the left this is where I'm supposed to go yeah right here Balai Seni art gallery so I did go in the right way it's just that uh, Malaysia, as usual, just won't let me go that way. For pedestrians, it's a tough, tough place. At least now I've got a focus, 
physical. I'm locked on. I'm locked on to the gallery. Yeah, so now I've walked all the way around to the front of the building and I, I don't think I'm supposed to be in here. But they've got me trapped like a, a mouse in a maze. Okay, it looks like I can get out here. All right, and then get around to there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this sort of ties in with what I was saying at the very beginning of this journey that I had the choice between walking here all the way or taking the MRT, LRT combo. And you think, oh, it'll be much faster to take the LRT, MRT, but even getting that route, you, it ends up taking as long or longer than had I just started walking and come straight here. But yeah, look at this uh, building. Classic architecture from that era. Amazing trees. I always love these. Look at the size of that one. It's huge. I sent Jamie a message telling him I'm here. I just need to uh, navigate a little bit. Yeah, there's the MRT station. So that's the mistake I made. I went off in that direction thinking I had to take the small roads and I should have come just straight here down the main road. That's what I should have done. I just uh, got all discombobulated about my directions. So now that I'm here, I doubt that I'm going to give a complete breakdown of everything inside the museum. I'll shoot some video of the place in general, the entrance. There's a, a um, circular stairway in the center of the art gallery, which is quite interesting. But in terms of the exhibits, I don't imagine there's any point doing a deep dive and taking video of every single painting or sculpture or piece of art that's on display. But we'll see how it goes. Take a quick look inside, walk around, shoot some video. And here's the uh, big sign for the place, Balai Seni Nagara. Looks like a nice shot for a uh, picture. You've got the sign and the Patronus Towers there on the right. At long last, here it is. The National Art Gallery. Built in 1998, I think, as I said. Looks like it could, uh, yeah, dates from that year that makes it 26 years old. Kind of looks like a 26 year old building. And here's a sign on the, the building itself. Hey. <laughs> oh man, did I get lost? Wow. I was just way off in the wilderness over there. Okay. Well, you made it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was here on time. I really was, but... And then there was a guy back there, a really friendly Malaysian guy. He stopped me. Oh, and so, like a five-minute chat. Right. So that put me five minutes uh, later. I couldn't really uh, just cut him off and oh, go. No Jamie's problem. waiting, buddy. I gotta go. So I have uh, found Jamie. He was here waiting patiently. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's uh, the building from this side. It's probably not as impressive an angle, but a lot of these mu national museums and performing arts centers are, the building is a big part of the attraction. So I just want to get a shot of uh, what it looks like from over here. Oh, interesting. Alright, so I'm going to head inside. There is a sign there I was reading and it tells you what you can't bring in and one of the things is no photography accessories allowed. But I think what they really mean is no tripods. You can't go in like a professional film crew. But just to be safe, I'm going to put my GoPro away as we go in and then I'll take it out again once we're inside. I think it'll be fine. I just saw another person go in with a big Sony camera. so. I think it's okay, but you never know with museums. So we're inside the National Art Gallery now, a bit of an adventure coming in. 
they made us scan a QR code to register. And, uh, but when, the, when, they, when it looked like Jamie was doing it, the guard looked at me and says, oh, you don't need to, just one person has to register as a visitor. And then we were all ready to come in, but then someone else kind of waved us over. And I wasn't sure what he was on about, but he took us into a smaller a hallway and he said, no, you can't bring in your knapsacks. So they had a um, locked locker there. He opened it and we put our knapsacks in. And you are allowed to have cameras, you're just not allowed to have tripods. So when I took out my GoPro, at first he says, oh, you can't bring that in because he thought my hand grip was a tripod. But of course I convinced him it's just a hand grip. So yeah, so you have to register with a QR code and you, ha you can't bring a knapsack in of any kind. You have to store it. And the main exhibit is what I talked about already, I think it's called Noosa. So there's the name Noosa, which means motherland or homeland. And it is a collection that they've taken out of their permanent. So it's an exhibit they took from their permanent collection. So it would probably be a whole mixture of artists, different mediums, painting, sculpture, I don't really know. So uh, there was one interesting exhibit right at the entrance. It's quite visual anyway. A uh, series of safety vests hung from the ceiling. And that, that's not part of Noosa, that's another artist's uh, exhibit. So, the thing I like best about the art gallery is this uh, stairway. A, uh, you go up floor to floor on this uh, circular stairway. So it's like a ramp that just goes up and up and up. And spin around. And... So, yeah, you just go up and up and up and up and up like a corkscrew until you finally get all the way up there to the top. I just made myself dizzy by doing that. So, yeah. So I guess Jamie and I are gonna start here at the bottom and then start walking, get up to the next floor and uh, see what's on display today. I wasn't going to talk about this exhibit, but it's actually a little bit interesting because you can see it's scrolling off to the side and I thought it would loop in 30 seconds or something like that and show us the same 20 people every 30 seconds. But it turns out this video, if you want to call it a video, is four hours long. And yeah, video duration, four hours. And they have it scheduled throughout the day. So at nine o'clock in the morning, it starts with ocean life, sea surface, coastline, mangrove, and then throughout the entire day, a segment on Borneo, segment on India, and then a whole bunch of people. And right now at 1137, right now we're in the random portraits section, which will run until 1257. <laughs> so that's crazy. So these random portraits are just gonna go on for a long, long time. Interesting. Jamie and I just finished a tour up on the, the second floor. So it's the first exhibit room that we've been into for the Noosa exhibit. And I didn't really have expectations for what this exhibit would be like. To be honest, my expectations were quite low because it's coming from the permanent collection and I thought it would, anyway, I just didn't think it would be, it would be nice, but I didn't know if it would be that interesting, but I'm very impressed. I'm not, uh, a, deep thinking artist of any kind. I, but um, yeah, I really enjoyed it a lot. Just uh, going around, you know, I always enjoy sculpture of any kind, especially metal sculpture. And as soon as you walk in, you've got these uh, metal pieces, which I really like. And then just overall, the spaciousness of the display and all the different pieces that are here. Really interesting, really nice. All kinds of different uh, mediums, different styles. Like over here, for example. And uh, Jamie and I both reacted to two pieces in particular that were our favorite pieces. One of them is directly ahead of me right now. What I said about this piece is that this is something, if I had a huge house with a big wall, I would put this on the wall. 
I don't know why, I just like it. I thought, yeah, I could have that in my house. I really like that piece, it just looks interesting. And then there can be other paintings, you know, that can have just as much artistic merit. Perhaps this one here, or this one over here with the fruit and the wine bottles. And yet none of these pieces, I, I wouldn't put them up on the wall. And that's sort of one way I would judge a piece of art. Would I hang it on the wall in my apartment? And that first piece there, I would. And uh, yeah, here's another room, all kinds of different pieces. And our favorite piece is a quite a large one over here. I'll get to it uh, in a minute. I think this one here, I would say, is my third favorite piece. I don't know why. I guess I like the idea of uh, paleontology and giant bones dug up from the ground. This is a stylized version, of course. But yeah, I like that. I think it's quite interesting. So that would be my third favorite piece. I mean, I like a lot of the things that I see here. And this uh, piece here is a little bit grim, a little bit darker. This would probably be one of my favorite pieces here as well. Just that the longer you look at it, the more you see in it. At the very beginning, I didn't even realize it, that I think it's all the same man. So this man lying down here, you can add your own interpretation to what's going on. He looks like he's ill. Perhaps he has a fatal illness. And then these are all scenes from his life. He's thinking about his life, his family members, things like that. But yeah, the longer you look at it, the more details you see. The little girls here. And then he's holding up a lollipop for one of them. And then here, he's, it's the same man, clearly, because he's holding the same lollipop. And then this little girl here seems to be staring right at us out of the painting. And uh, there's a window there with some people looking in through the window. Could be a son or daughter, family members, who knows? But I just find it an interesting piece. There's so many details in there. You keep noticing more and more things the longer you look at it. And my favorite piece, and Jamie's favorite piece, probably isn't going to come as a big surprise. It's this one right here. Really interesting. Again, you can, you can stand here. Jamie and I were looking at it for the longest time, and the longer we stood here, the more detail we saw. So this is actually an illustration of Kuala Lumpur, and uh, from mainly from the Chinatown area. So right here, of course, is uh, Petaling Street, Jalan Petaling. And then the longer we looked at it, the more we realized we knew so many of these buildings. I even had uh, you know, beef noodle soup right here. We both are very familiar with this uh, curved building up there. And then all of the human figures, the more you zoom in on those, you see so many different activities that would be recognizable for anyone who spent time in uh, Kuala Lumpur or in Malaysia. So down here in the corner, for example, sort of a still life, all kinds of uh, street scenes, people doing different things, market stalls. Yeah, the longer you, you look at this, the more details you see about the buildings and the different neighborhoods. Yeah, I, really, I like that a lot.
So that is just a, a sampling, just a selection of all the uh, pieces of art that are in here. Quite interesting. On to the next, uh, next gallery room. It's now 12.30 and this, the portraits, the random portraits are still going by. There's just no end to them. Really kind of interesting. I wonder how many there are in total. It doesn't say, but the, the portraits are gonna keep going by for another 20 minutes or so before the uh, scrolling moves on to another subject. So there's another gallery over here, part of the uh, Noosa exhibit. This appears to be the other main exhibit connected with uh, Noosa, perhaps. And it's uh, quite a bit different than the other room, as you can see here, describes it a little bit. Noosa works on paper. And I guess these pieces are very sensitive to humidity, light and temperature. So it's quite a bit cooler in here. But it says that there are 98 pieces of selected works. 78 watercolors and so they are from uh, expeditions in peninsular malaya and borneo so the watercolors and sketches are by colonial british officers such as uh, frank swettenham and uh, george gilles yeah they're really quite nice a nice contrast from the other room much smaller, you know, less exotic, less glamorous pieces, but they're all really, really nice. A piece like here, just a charcoal sketch. And uh, it's interesting to see that they're all dated from 1884. So all of these pieces along this wall are all from uh, Frank Swettenham. And this one is, uh, yeah, in the Taiping Hills. Yeah, they're quite nice. I'd like to think about these guys drawing them, pulling up a chair underneath these trees and then getting out their sketch pad. And of course, as I said, I have no artistic ability at all. So anyone that can just even draw something like this seems like a profoundly gifted person to me. It just seems like an incredible power to be able to draw. Yeah, as I said, there's a lot of small uh, pieces here inside the room. It's worth uh, taking some time and stopping here and there and taking a close look at a bunch of them. Frank Swettenham and then George Gilles uh, does a lot over on, uh, these, on this wall here. So they're all mainly from uh, the 1800s. A lot from uh, the Taiping Ipo area and then uh, from Borneo.
I don't know if there are other exhibits connected with Noosa, the, the current from their permanent collection, but uh, I'm gonna go out for a walk around the rest of the museum, see what else is here. So we've made our way up to the top floor, coming up the spiral stair stairway. It's not really a stairway, what do you call this? A ramp, spiral ramp, winds all the way up to the top. So here we are at the top of the building. Looks very modern on the inside. It actually looks like an older building to me on the outside, but this inside section looks very modern. Very nice. But I don't know what this is over here. I guess it's uh, an exhibit of some kind. I thought maybe there was a restaurant up here. <laughs> well, it's down below there is on the ground floor, but this must be another exhibit. Interaxi Cine and Gastronomy. And I guess that would be the last, uh, the last exhibit. And here's the entrance lobby. Yeah, very different atmosphere in this exhibit. It's, this is not part of Noosa. This is a different exhibit altogether. It's interesting to come in here. It's darker, more atmospheric. And apparently the theme of this exhibit, of course, has to do with gastronomy, food and cooking, and our relationship to food and cooking, I suppose. But yeah, looks, uh, looks fun. Big surprise, uh, we've come all the way down to the main floor and I noticed when we came in, there were two galleries, one on either side and we walked by them to go up the spiral uh, ramp to go to the Noosa exhibit. I didn't know what was down here, but it turns out that this gallery anyway has got a lot in it. So there's a lot more art here than I was expecting. It might be more than my brain can absorb all in one visit. Feels like the things that I've seen so far is more than enough for one visit. But this is the, the display here in this gallery. And maybe I'll do a quick walk around this room. 
and uh, you can see, get a, get a sense of what's going on here. One more gallery to check out, and Jamie's already been through here, and he was just saying that these last two are the best exhibits at the museum right now, and uh, we should have <laughs> we should have come in here first, so we would have had uh, more energy. But uh, Enrique de Malaca Memorial Project. So I just read through the introduction to this uh, gallery and it is, it's something I've never heard anything about. It's a story of a man named Enrique from Malacca and I guess Ferdinand Magellan had him on his ships and he was a slave on his ships. And then he was even mentioned in Ferdinand Magellan's will and he went with Magellan on his uh, journeys on his ship. And I'm assuming this is a meant to be an image of uh, Enrique, Enrique de Malacca.
think my time at the museum has come to an end. Uh, Jamie and I are going to hop back into the MRT system and go for a uh, lunch. But I think uh, I'll end the video right here, standing beside one of my favorite exhibits. I, I can never resist a bicycle like this, of course. So yeah, I enjoyed this quite a bit. A uh, quick visit to the National Art Gallery of uh, Kuala Lumpur. Well worth visiting, I enjoyed that a lot. Really interesting uh, exhibits uh, down here on the main floor and then the big Noosa exhibit up top. I enjoyed all of them. I could have used more time down here, but by the time Jamie and I went through all the exhibits on the upper floors, we didn't realize that these exhibits down here were as interesting as they were. We could have reserved more energy for here, but I went around all of them and uh, took a look at everything that's on display. Really interesting. I enjoyed that quite a bit. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, it's funny, in the old days, I would look at myself in the morning, I'd look really tired, and i think, yeah, you know, after a good night's rest, I'll look a lot better. But these days, I never look any better, ever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, ba bathrooms like that are quite a shock to me because they have such clean, beautiful mirrors. Oh, yeah. And I walk up to them, and I'm just like recoiling in horror. Like, ah, the beast, who is that? It's over this way. Well, I made short work of that. <laughs> Coming from the art gallery to the MRT station was so easy. This is the way I should have gone. But ah, for some reason, I went off in the wrong direction. But yeah, from here, you can see the Performing Arts Center again. Just a nice uh, angle on it. But all I needed to do to get to the art gallery was just cross here and go down the main road. It's right over there. But. I went off in this direction for some reason. We're racing. I'm uh, doing the escalators. Jamie's getting his steps in. Let's we'll see who reaches the bottom first. I think he's got me beat. Come on, escalator. Now he's gonna beat me to the bottom. <laughs> 